I did a piece the other day about this Bishop Griffin up there at the Child's Memorial Church, Church of God in Christ up there on Amsterdam Avenue. I know the, I, I know Bishop Quick. I know this Bishop Griffin. I don't know this guy from a can of soup, but I know I know Bishop uh, uh, you know Quick. His his church was seven blocks away from our church uh, when I first became the pastor of this church. He was a much younger man then. Um, now this other bishop named Griffin, who's taking his place, sold that church property here because property in Harlem is hot. I mean, this is a, a very, very hot real estate market now in Harlem. So he sold the building, the land for $2 million with a deal that they were going to build them a, a sanctuary inside of an apartment building so they could, they could be rent from the, from the developer. But this guy Griffin didn't tell the church that he was getting money under the table. He got $400,000. He got $900,000 under the table. And his wife was given $100,000 by the developer to influence the church, to the trustees and everybody, the people, to sell the property. Well, Tish James, who was the attorney general for the state of New York, has indicted that boy. That Bishop Griffin, she put she indicted. She's she going to send him to jail. That boy going to jail. I can tell you that right now. She indicted him. And uh, he... Um, I don't know if the trial has started yet, but um, the um, uh, and, and but I, I want to. There's another. Uh, uh, there's a developer here in um, here here in and uh, that's also that was recently um, in, in, indicted for here Harlem developer Jerry Migdal arrested on fraud charges. I'll read this to you. I don't know if we have Mr. Engine, if we have that. It says a prominent Harlem real estate developer has been indicted on fraud and identity theft charges for his alleged scheme uh, to boost now uh, Lieutenant Governor Brian Benjamin uh, during his campaign for city control of federal prosecutors have announced. Gerald, Jerry is a 71-year-old developer, was arrested Friday morning and could spend decades in prison if convicted on the charges, which were revealed Friday in an unsealed indictment. Between October 2019 and January 2021, prosecutors allege that Migdal orchestrated a scheme to falsify the true sources of campaign contribution flowing to candidate to a, a candidate for New York City Controller. As part of an effort to secure matching funds, the city program uh, that gives candidates, that's the same thing, if you're a candidate in the city of New York, the city of New York will give you, if, if I give the candidate a dollar, the city of New York will give him a dollar. So this guy was falsifying records saying he was giving millions of dollars to this guy, Brian, uh, uh, controller uh, guy, and, um, but he was lying. It was a scheme. It was a ripoff. And they busted him. And he's now facing charges where he could possibly be a, uh, you know, in jail for a very, very long time. I, um, there's been a lot of chicanery. There's been a lot of things going on here in, 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 in the Harlem area uh, with respect to property. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit confused as to what these developers are doing. I think they're going to run with the money because I don't see it all working out. But I, 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 this is just one of an, an incident where this person has been caught. But nearly every major million-dollar development in Harlem has probably been a lot of illegal things going on. And the, uh, the, the, the churches have been, and the people have been, you know, they've just been hoodwinked. You know, you come into Harlem, right? And there's a church that's got 30, 40 members. Right, the pastor, you know, he never had no real money, and you offer him five million dollars for his building, and he's behind in his light bill and everything else, and the members who've never had any real, you know, no, no real money, and they've been selling, they've been selling their churches and their church property like you won't believe, and it's very disappointing. To see how they're doing that and, wh and why they're doing that. Uh, but that's what's happening here. And the thieves are taking land. I mean, it is is a land grab. It's a land steal. They, they're they foreclosing other churches at, and, and properties. That it is it is just incredible what I, what's happening. In, and it, it breaks my heart to see it take place. Um, and I'm asking you, you know, right now we're facing a very dark, time in New York City, not amid the Biden administration in Washington. Now they got this guy, Eric Adams, who's going to become the mayor of the city of New York. He's a Hamite. He's a, uh, and the boy has, um, he, he was a police captain. 
and then he ran for borough president. I think he was an assemblyman or something, and he became borough president of Brooklyn. But you know what that boy did? When he, um, when he was uh, uh, elected, uh, he, he, he took this private jet. There's this billionaire, this Bitcoin billionaire guy. This guy got money, his grandmama. He'd be in there. This Bitcoin thing. A lot of people making a lot of money on that. This, 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 Eric Adams took his jet and flew down to Puerto Rico, right? Now, I think there need to be an investigation as to whether or not Eric Adams paid for that jet ride. Because if it was a gift, if he, if he just gave him his jet, and then beyond that, once Eric Adams become mayor, I can tell you this, you're going to see Bitcoin, you're going to see the mayor pushing Bitcoin down your throat, making, you know, I don't know what, parking meters Bitcoin or making the subway ride Bitcoin because he, Eric Adams stands to make a ton of money uh, on Bitcoins as the mayor of the city of New York because he controlled he, the controller's office. So it's going to be a mess. Plus, Eric Adams ain't all there. I mean, you know, he... Um, I don't think that the New Yorkers, I'll tell you what he does have, then this is what's got going, what he's got going for him and what may be his saving grace no matter what. He's got the Jewish community here in New York on his side. Um, and, 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 and not that I'm a hater of the Jews, I'm a Zionist. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm more Jewish than Jews. Are. I'm a Zionist. So let, let's get straight about what we'll be straight about. But Eric Adams got the Jews on his side, and he and 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 the Jews are going to have their hands in the pockets of everybody in New York City with Eric Adams because he's just going to be their boy. He's just going to be their boy. And see, nobody realized this. That, I mean, I I think a lot of other people recognized it that this was what's happening with uh, you know with his run for mayor. But I can tell you now. That New York City, is, <laughs> no, I'm a Zionist, all right? all right? Let's get something straight here. You know, I ain't one of these people who was a Jew hater. No, mm -mm, I'm a Zionist. Um, but, you know, uh, Jesse Jackson called uh, New York Jaime Town. And for a long time after Jesse made that derogative, and it was a derogative statement, I didn't agree with it. Uh, about about uh, Jews in New York, um, Jesse had a hard time getting an interview. Again. He had a hard time getting on any television station. To, you know, to his his Rainbow Push Coalition. He had a hard time getting. Um, you know, and he lost a lot of followers. He lost a lot of contributors. Um, you know, Jesse went down from there. He was riding high till they called New York Jaime Town. And uh, but uh, I can tell you this, and I don't agree. I don't agree with a statement, Jaime Town. I'm against that. But what I do tell you is this: Jesse Jackson ain't seen nothing compared to what Eric Adams gonna do with Jews here in New York City. And um, you know, when Bloomberg, who is also Jewish, was mayor of New York City, you know, you get a parking ticket, right? You, you, you park your car, you go into the barber shop or something, you go into CVS or whatever, and you're in there and you're stuck in line and you can't get back out, and the hour's up, and the parking meter come, uh, made, uh, comes along, give me a ticket, stick it on your windshield. Ah, you got to pay $15, right? That's how it was under every mayor to Bloomberg came, became mayor. Swear, this is the absolute true. When Bloomberg became mayor, he started sticking his hands in every pocket in New York City. A parking ticket, this is absolutely true, a parking ticket in New York went from $15 to $75. And if you don't pay in the first 30 days, it goes to $150. And if you get three, they come get your car. A $15 parking ticket. That's on the Bloomberg, Mr. Billionaire Bloomberg. He raised the rent in New York on everybody. So I'm so glad to see that boy go out and know what to do because I'm not uh, happy about that boy de Blasio either. But I'm so glad to see he raised, uh, he raised the, the, the water sewer charges. He raised fees on everything. Your driver's license used to get for $5. Now it costs you $75 for a, for a driving license for crying out loud. I mean, he, my boy raised fees everywhere, taxes everywhere, Bloomberg. 
But man, you ain't seen nothing yet. You wait till Eric Adams finish with uh, dealing with the Jews. Put that, that photo of him back up there. There's some no. We need to search the archives of of, of his uh, his. Ex watch the acceptance speech. It's going to happen on what's the first uh, 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 January, right? See them, see them Jews back there. Oh, that's all Jews back there. All of them. There, there's one with, you know, there's one back here with a hat on. You know, all of them. That's it. That's it. He, they, and he's their boy. Now I want to keep repeating. I'm a Zionist. I don't even matter think I'm against Jews. Jesus was a Jew. I don't even matter think I'm. I'm just telling it. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm telling you what we're getting ready to face with, with Eric Adams and Harlem. Um, the um, uh, is, is is I'm not sure. You know, I, one of the things I will say is that when the Jews were in Harlem years and years ago before the riots, Jews and black people worked together like you know, uh, like like a horse and carriage. It was I think one of the I I, I think what really if I you know had the time to his, historically I would write about the great relationship between Jews and black people uh, before the riots of the 1960s. Uh, it was just a beautiful, loving relationship. Um, and Harlem was a beautiful place then uh, when the Jews were in the Jews and blacks at Bloomstein's department store and, you know, and, 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 and many of the other clothing. So it was a beautiful. Uh, but then David Dinkins came in and stirred the pot and had Crown Heights riots. It was a myth. Now you got now you got Eric Adams. We need to fasten your seatbelt. It ain't going to be pretty. It ain't going to be pretty going forward. 